Hi guys, so today I have a few items to play with uh, from Spellbinders, some of their new uh, collections that they came out with for April. Um, they do launch these new collections like on the 20th of the month. Um, these items are available now already though for purchase if you're interested. Um, so these were sent free of charge from my review and all opinions are my own. And any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items to those links. Um, these are available, like I said, on Spellbinders. They are on Scrapbook com and um, scrapbookpal.com. I'll have the different links uh, for whatever is available. Um, I know one of the items I want to show you guys today, the Slimline Flora, is sold out on Spellbinders itself, but it, it depends on when you're watching this. Of course, I'll have the links either way. Um, and if it's there, available, then it'll be there if it's out of stock, you know, or in stock. Uh, but this is an embossing folder, which I just think is lovely. It's a nice Slimline. So this is part of the new Slimline collection. And then this, the dies that you're looking at here is the Moroccan Kaleidoscope. It's very similar to those Kaleidoscope type dies that uh, Spellbinders is known for. So we'll look at that in just a minute. But uh, really cool. I, you know, uh, let's check this out. Let's check out the sizing. Because I know on my slim lines, I like them to be three and a half by eight and a half. Um, and this is about three and a quarter inches wide but I would say eight and a quarter inches long. So it's a nice mat into a three and a half by eight and a half slim line. Of course, it depends on the sizes you like to do. Um, and I'm assuming this will probably be very similar. So let me see the outer die st uh, size. Um, is just inside three and a quarter. I'd say it's like three and an eighth by eight. You know, it's just over an eighth. So again, this mat's nicely inside of a three and a half by eight and a half. So uh, the sizing is the same is what I'm trying to say all around, like what the measurement to take off of that. We have the insert for the Moroccan kaleidoscope here, which is gorgeous. I, you know me, I think I'm pretty much gonna make a shaker, so I'm gonna try this out. But I can see that when you use this as an insert, you don't have to use the outer die. Um, if I do use the outer die, the edge is very thin for me to put down some foam. So what I think I'm gonna do is make my own I'm just going to cut it down and use this as an insert. Okay, so I'm not going to use the outer die today. I may or may not use these pieces here, but these are the layering pieces, just like any other kaleidoscope um, set that uh, Spellbinders puts together. So you have the larger piece, and then you layer the thinner and thinner pieces on top. So this is the largest piece that would be the base. And then you would layer this gorgeous piece when it cuts out on top of that piece. As you can see, it's a little bit thicker on the edges than this one. And this one would go on top, so then you have the three... Um, colors kind of poking through or peeking through depending on how it's layered up. Um, of course you don't have to use all three layers, you can just use whatever you like. And then you can pop them in here, it does have a little space so that um, uh, if you place them there it's going to have a little bit of space in between them or however you want to use them. Uh, but what I'm going to do right now is grab some papers and um, we'll get started. I do want to show you one other thing in case you haven't seen the new releases for April. I do have some things uh, that will be arriving shortly, but I do have these beautiful, delightful um, sets here. And I had mentioned that they do have these stamp sets in the set of all four of them, and it is available now, um, unless it's sold out, but it is available now. And these are two of the sets that I have here. So um, I think one's called... You know what? I don't know the names of them right now. But either way, it's STP040. I'll have the links for them. STP042. And I actually was thinking about using them in here. Wouldn't that be cute if you just did the little faces? And the, well, I think that would be adorable, like little apertures. Because you could always use one of these guys laid in here to actually cut the whole aperture out. Because if you can see, this doesn't remove the center part. It just puts a little um, dotting around it, so it's really cute. Um, and then you can cut out an aperture and make it more of a frame, which is probably what I'll have to do uh, today if I'm going to make this into a shaker. So, uh, yeah. So let me grab some papers and we'll get started. Okay, guys. So I'm trimming these papers down. So I have um, some papers I took out of the April card kit, which is just gorgeous. Um, sincerely yours there. And so I have some papers. I cut these down. I'm going to use this as the card base. So for the card base for Slimline, this paper is already 8.5 by 11. So I'm going to trim it down to seven inches on um, so it's eight and a half by seven so we'll put this to the side here and so these are just some of the papers I have so this will be our card base and really beautiful navy blue there and then this one I like I said I'm going to cut it down I'm not going to use the die the outer die so I can have some plenty of room to do my little foam um, around the edges so I cut this one down to um, three and three eighths by eight and three eighths so it's just smaller than around here 
Now, if you want more of that to show, you can cut it down even uh, a little bit more. Maybe, uh, again, your typical um, probably eight and a quarter by three and a quarter or something like that. But I did want to keep it a little bit slimmer and I'm just gonna tape that down and run that through. Now I am going to cut out these pieces here because basically I want those apertures to be open. So I'm gonna place one each here. Basically this is gonna cut out the whole piece because they have an edge, the whole edge cuts out. So we can do it all at once. If you wanna do one piece at a time, you know, it's up to you. So there's gonna be a lot of taping going on on this one. And so I'm gonna make sure it's where I want it to be this way and this way and also here. So I am gonna put quite a bit of tape to hold everything down, okay? And on this one, it's just the embossing folder and I cut down the piece of paper just to fit inside the embossing folder, which again was about eight and a quarter by um, three and a quarter. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. And my paper is the same on either side, so it doesn't really matter. But if you're looking at your paper, you definitely wanna feel it and see what's gonna be pushed up or into. So like on this side, it's raised. So that's gonna push it into this side. So if you um, definitely have a front or a back on your paper, you wanna pay attention to that. So whatever's raised, you want um, the back of your paper facing that. So it pushes into the side that you do want to be showing, right? So, or you can do it the other way, however you like if you're looking for a deboss as opposed to emboss. So I'll run this through my machine, however your machine takes, you know, embossing folders, um, go ahead and do that. And then this one, like I said, I'm gonna tape it down really well, I'll run this through and I'll be right back. Actually, I'm gonna clean this out, but um, if you just remove <laughs> these pieces, you can have these pieces that you can use another time on something else. Just save them for another project. Not those little pieces. Where's the ejector button? Here it is. So each one of these is going to cut out with that beautiful, ooh, intricate little piece that, again, you would normally use for the decoration. So I'm just gonna pop those out and clean out my um, die. See, this piece also is gonna come out and this okay. piece, but now we have all I also apertures. cut a piece of um, acetate. I'll put these things to the side. And I was thinking, if you wanna put these inside your shaker, you definitely could. All these beautiful little pieces, like the larger ones, like maybe not the ones that are cut a little differently, but those pieces. So we can think about it, but I'll keep this to the side just in case I do decide to do that. And what I'm going to do with this one is go ahead and just glue this down. And I cut the acetate about the same size, eight and three eighths by three and three eighths of an inch. And it's hard to see because it's um, clear, but we will get that stuck down. So I'm just gonna hold this down for a little bit. It got a little bit wonky because there's a lot going on and a lot of very intricate pieces here or areas. And so I'm just gonna put glue around the whole edge, of course, and as much as I can. Get on this inner edge here. Oh, I have some areas I need to pop out still. It came out really clean, but there's a couple little spots I need to pop out like that little scrap there. And then I am gonna put some glue on the back of my hand. Let me pick this up. Pop out those last little pieces. These little guys here. I think that's it. Okay, with the glue on the back of my hand, I'm going to go over that little lattice area just to get a little glue, a little something else to help us stick that down. It's not completely. Okay, and I'm gonna stick that down on my clear acetate. Since this is a large piece, I'm gonna start at one side and just kind of bring it down. Okay, I'm gonna hold this down until it's adhered really nicely and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just gonna score my uh, seven by eight and a half piece, the card base at three and a half. Of course, along the seven inch side. And we're almost done with our card base. And then whatever embellishment you like to put on top of that would be adorable. Um, so then I have this gorgeous piece of cardstock here. Look at that. Just really deeply etched and beautiful. Again, deboss. 
emboss, whichever side you like to put up. I'm going to put this one up here, and basically what I figure is we'll put this on top with that shaker, and then add some kind of sentiment. Look how pretty that is. First of all, we could glue this completely flat, and that would be just fine. You don't have to put the acetate. It would just be really pretty with that background. But I wanted to pop it up. So I'm going to do, in the meantime, is go ahead and adhere this. Oopsie. Um, I don't know if there's a direction to this. It looks like it's just a lot of little flowers. But if you think there's an up and a down, then you go ahead and place it however you like. But now that I look at it, I mean, this, you know, it could be this way. Look how pretty the flowers are going up. They could be kind of coming down. <laughs> they could be looked at this way, and then these guys are up here. It could be looked at this way, and these guys are kind of coming up. It's just a beautiful menagerie of flowers there. I guess it's a potpourri of flowers. If it was a menagerie, it'd be animals, right? Okay, so I'm going to hold this down. I'm going to get some um, uh, dimensional adhesive on the back of this. I actually have to go grab some more because I think this is on its last leg here. But I'm just going to place this. And that's why I cut my own... Um, yeah, it just ran out. Um, because I wanted it to be thick enough to not have to fight with it, I'm just going to make it very easy and use some uh, foam tape that's about a quarter inch wide. So I will be right back once I frame this out. Okay, again, I had mentioned if you wanted to use these pieces as um, confetti, you can definitely do that. So what I'm doing is just popping out from behind uh, the ones that are complete, like these whole pieces. And... I'm going to grab some sequins and some other pretty things we can pop in here, and I'll be right back. Just taking the backs off of these guys here. Very sticky. Let's put it to the side. So I, um, you know, I grabbed these papers from the card kit of the month for April, and um, it, there's just a lot going on in here. So with the Sincerely Yours, so as I was looking at the colors, I thought, oh, you know, maybe I'll get a sentiment from here with the die cuts. But then I thought, oh, maybe I'll use a sequence. Oh, you know what? I'll also use some of these other stickers. So this is going to be really fun. I think it'll give it a, a different look, even though it has that Moroccan style. So we put those little papers in there just for something. We have the sequence from the kit here. So I'm going to spread them out just a little bit because what happens with stuff like this is that you get it in there and sometimes um, if you have it in a mound, it'll stay in a mound. So if there's pieces that are stuck together, you just definitely go through and separate them out. Should have sequenced. Sometimes they're kind of together. <laughs> um, you can add more or less. I'm just going to keep it like this. Um, I already took the backing off of this guy, so I'm just going to bring it over. Oh. And I'm going to eyeball this. The pink paper is a little bit smaller than this purple paper that I have going on. So, oops, sorry guys. I'm hopefully going to be able to size this up and not be too worried about it more that way. That's, I think, as good as it's going to get for me. I'm going to turn this over and give it a really good press in the back. So I got this uh, word friends. I thought it was really cute. A lot of the colors are similar and just bright and fun. So I think I'm going to use that. But I also um, have these guys. And I thought they'd be cute. And we'll try it out. Actually, what I like is that they're on a clear carrier. So you can always... I mean, this looks fun just like this, right? If I was to stick that down. But I thought maybe adding some little flowers. Even the sentiment. Look at that. Let your light shine if that was just on there. How cute is that? So I will... Pop on some little flowers. Let me see. I'm not pushing it down completely because these are uh, 3D stickers and they have the little foam. So if I don't push it down completely, I can probably pick it back up. I'm just trying to see what I want to do as far as placement. That's really sweet. And then the word friends in here. Oh my gosh. I'm just trying to see, do I want friends to be flat? Maybe I'll leave it flat because everything else has a lot of dimension. So I think that's actually I like where they are. So I'm going to give them a really good push. And then I'll just glue this down. I could add dimensional adhesive on the back of this if we wanted to. But I think that's really cute. I'm going to try to... There's like little tabs where it was taken away from, you know, it's popped out of its paper. The die cut. I'm just going to flatten those out. And I want this to be tucked behind these pretties. So let me just make sure it's back there. Nope. Here, come this way, buddy. Oh my gosh. So cute and quick. Shaker with embossing in the background. <laughs> A lot going on. Those beautiful stickers. How cute is that? 
So thank you so much, Spellbinders, for these items from our review. I'll have links in the description box for you guys. And <laughs> look at that. Gorgeous. I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.